Chapter Five of Stories from God's Holy Book by Josephine Looney. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Maria Therese. The coat of a prince. I wish I had a rainbow dancing dress," sighed Patricia. Last night I dreamed about one. Girls are always thinking about clothes," Bobby said in his most grown-up manner. Anyway, dreams are silly, aren't they, Joe? Not always," answered Joe. Long ago, God sometimes gave people messages in dreams. Patricia was immediately interested. "I wonder if my dream was a message," she asked. "I hardly think so," said Joe, smiling. "God doesn't send His messages in dreams now. We have His church to teach us, and that is better. But there is a very fine story about dreams that God once sent, and about a rainbow coat. It was a very distinctive coat." What's distinctive? Asked Bobby. Whose coat was it? Questioned Patricia. It belonged to a boy named Joseph. Joe began, who lived in the land of Palestine. Joseph had ten brothers, and he was the youngest. His father Jacob loved him very much. Jacob gave Joseph a coat like those which were worn by princes. It was red and green and blue and yellow and orange and violet. Joseph's brothers were angry because Jacob gave him this beautiful coat. Joseph was very good. He always followed God's law. When he was seventeen years old, God sent him two dreams. These dreams meant that some day Joseph would rule over his brothers. Joseph knew what the dreams meant and told his brothers. Didn't that make them angrier than ever? Questioned Bobby. It certainly did. Joe replied, "They were so angry that one day, when he was out in the field, they decided to kill him. But his oldest brother, Reuben, was kinder than the rest. Reuben said, 'Don't kill him. Just throw him into that old dried-up well.' Reuben really meant to save Joseph. As soon as the others went away, he was going to take him out of the well. They took off Joseph's beautiful coat. Then they threw him into the dried-up well. After that, they sat down to eat their lunch." While they were eating, some men on camels came by. They were merchants going to the land of Egypt. The brothers decided to take Joseph out of the well and sell him to these men. How can you sell people? Demanded Bobby. It isn't done now, Bobby. Joe explained. But in those days, people could be bought to work in their master's house or fields. They were called slaves, like in that movie you took us to, Joe, about President Lincoln. Yes, there were slaves in that movie too. What happened to the rainbow coat? Patricia asked. The brothers killed a sheep and dipped the coat in its blood. Then they took it to their father. When Jacob saw it, he thought it was Joseph's blood. He was sure Joseph had been eaten by a wild beast. He cried and cried, and no one could comfort him. What happened to Joseph? Bobby wanted to know. The merchants sold him to a captain in Egypt's army, and the captain was good to him. But the captain's wife told lies about him and had him thrown into prison. But God loved Joseph and took care of him even in prison. There were two other prisoners with Joseph. One night, each of them had a dream he could not understand. God told Joseph what those dreams meant, and Joseph told the prisoners. How long did Joseph stay in prison? Patricia asked. Two long years, Joe answered. Then one night, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had a dream he could not understand. He called in all the magicians and wise men of the land, but they did not know what the dream meant. Then Pharaoh heard about Joseph telling the prisoners the meaning of their dreams. He said, "Maybe Joseph can tell about my dream too." He sent to the prison for Joseph and told him his dream. "What was the dream?" Bobby inquired. The king dreamt he was standing beside a river that ran through a meadow. Seven fat cows came to graze in the meadow. Then seven thin cows came. And the thin cows ate up the fat cows and were still as thin as ever. The king also dreamt that seven fine ears of corn were growing on one stalk, and seven withered ears sprang up and destroyed them. What a funny dream! cried Patricia. Did God tell Joseph what it meant? Yes, He did. He told Joseph that the dream meant there would be seven years of good crops. The people would have more than enough to eat. Then there would be seven years when the crops would not grow and all the people would be hungry. Did the king believe him? Questioned Bobby. Yes, said Joe. The king thought that Joseph was such a wise and good man that he made him governor of Egypt. 
He dressed him in fine clothes. He put a gold ring on his finger and a gold chain around his neck. Then he had him ride through the land in a chariot, and all the people bowed down before him. For seven years, Joe continued, there was so much food growing in the gardens and the fields, the people couldn't eat it all. Joseph gathered up all the extra food. He put it into storehouses. Then came the seven bad years. Nothing would grow anywhere. People were starving in all that part of the world. But there was food in Egypt. Joseph opened the storehouses and gave it to the people. In the land of Palestine, Joseph's father and brothers were hungry, so Jacob told his sons to go and buy food from the governor of Egypt. Another son had been born to Jacob. His name was Benjamin, and he was still a little boy. Jacob loved him best of all his children now, so he would not let the others take him to Egypt. When the brothers came to buy food from Joseph, did they know who he was? interrupted Bobby. No, answered Joe, but he knew them. He wondered if they were still as bad as they had been. He decided to find out. So he pretended he thought they were enemies. He said they had come to Egypt to harm the Egyptians. They said, We are not enemies, we have come just to buy food. At home our old father Jacob and our little brother Benjamin are hungry. Joseph said he would sell them some food, but if they ever came back to Egypt, they must bring Benjamin with them to prove they were telling the truth. He had their sacks filled with food. On top of the food, he put the money they had paid him. They must have liked that, approved Patricia. No, said Joe, they didn't. When they got home and opened the sacks and the money came tumbling out, they were frightened. They didn't know how the money got there. They were afraid the governor would think they stole it. They didn't want to go back to Egypt, but at last they needed more food, so they had to go. Their father was very sad when they took Benjamin with them, but they promised to take care of him. Were the brothers jealous of Benjamin, too? asked Bobby. No, Joe said. They had become kinder. They were very sorry now that they had harmed Joseph. When the brothers got back to Egypt, Joseph sold them some food. Once again he put their money back into their sacks, and this time he did something else. He hid his own silver cup in Benjamin's sack. I have a silver cup, too, Patricia broke in. It has my name and birth date on it. Please don't interrupt, cried Bobby. Go on, Joe. The brothers started back home. Then Joseph sent a soldier after them to look for his cup. He said, Whoever has stolen my silver cup will have to be my slave. When the cup was found in Benjamin's sack, the other brothers were very sad. They begged Joseph to let Benjamin go, and to take them for his slaves instead. They said their old father would die of sorrow if the little boy did not come back home. Joseph saw that they were kind to their father and to Benjamin. They were not bad any more. So he told them who he was. Were they scared? Bobby asked. Yes, answered Joe, but Joseph said he had forgiven them. God had let his brothers sell him into Egypt so he could save many people from starving. He sent his brothers home to bring back their families and his father, Jacob. They all lived happily in Egypt for many years. So Joseph's dream was right, you see, concluded Joe. He did rule over his brothers. Well, I'm glad Joseph's dream meant something, even if mine didn't, Patricia observed. But maybe I'll have a rainbow-colored dancing dress some day, anyway. End of chapter 5